axolotls exhibit neoteny, meaning that they reach sexual maturity without undergoing metamorphosis. Many species within the axolotls genus are either entirely neotenic or have neotenic populations. In the axolotl, metamorphic failure is caused by a lack of thyroid-stimulating hormone, which is used to induce the thyroid to produce thyroxine in transforming salamanders. The genes responsible for neoteny in laboratory animals may have been identified, however, they are not linked in wild populations, suggesting artificial selection is the cause of complete neoteny in laboratory and pet axolotls. Unlike some other neotenic salamanders, axolotls can be induced to metamorphose by an injection of iodine or by shots of thyroxine hormone. As of 2010, wild axolotls were near extinction due to urbanization in Mexico City and consequent water pollution, as well as the introduction of invasive species such as tilapia and perch. They are currently listed as an endangered species in the wild, with a decreasing population. Axolotls are used extensively in scientific research due to their ability to regenerate limbs. Axolotls were also sold as food in Mexican markets and were a staple in the Aztec diet. The Quattro Cienegas softshell is a subspecies of the spiny softshell turtle in the family Trionychidae. As of the last assessment in 1996, it was considered critically endangered. These turtles are bimodal breathers, meaning they have the ability to perform oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange by breathing air or while breathing underwater. A variety of factors allow for these turtles to perform respiration underwater. They have an increase of cutaneous surface area and blood flow, reduction in lung size, and increase of respiratory epithelium in the cloaca and buccopharynx. Spiny softshell turtles are more dependent on underwater respiration than other freshwater species. This has led to their low tolerance of hypoxic waters, this becomes especially important during times of hibernation, when these turtles must choose hibernacula that are unlikely to become hypoxic. The Quattro Cienegas killifish is a critically endangered species of fish in the family Cyprinodontidae. It is endemic to Quattro Cienegas. They are mostly found in fresh water. The big pocket gopher is endemic to Veracruz state in eastern Mexico. It has only been found on the southeastern slopes of Pico de Orizaba, at elevations of 1,300 meters. These pocket gophers are capable of being quite destructive towards these crops as well, capable of causing up to a 50% loss in crops. Because of the significant losses, people have poured much effort into trying to control pocket gopher populations. Nelson's woodrat is a species of rodent in the family Chrysididae. It is known only from the eastern slopes of the volcanoes Orizaba and Cofre de Pirot. Due to the small geographic range, isolation, and low population, the Nelson's woodrat has a higher risk for extinction. The distribution and population sizes are small. The population exists in geographic isolation, which prevents gene flow. Currently the Nelson's woodrat is threatened by agriculture and invasive species. In Mexico, a conversion to agriculture is taking place which is taking away the home of the Nelson's woodrat. Exotic and invasive species pose a threat to the Nelson's woodrat as potential predators. Pierrot mouse can only be clearly distinguished from other mice in the genus Paramiscus by the fact that its ears are larger than its hindfeet by at least 2 mm, and, in the skeleton, by inflated auditory bully. These features may be related to an enhanced sense of hearing, allowing the mouse to readily detect predators. The mouse's highly specific habitat requirements, limited distribution, and declining population all contribute to its critically endangered status.
The Cozumel coati has been treated as a species, but the vast majority of recent authorities treat it as a subspecies of the white-nosed coati. They are slightly smaller than the white-nosed coatis of the adjacent mainland, but, when compared more widely to white-nosed coatis, the difference in size is not as clear. The level of other differences also support its status as a subspecies rather than a separate species. It has been speculated that it is the result of an ancient introduction to Cozumel by the Mayans. It is believed that the Cozumel Island coati is highly threatened and close to extinction. Island carnivores at the top of the food chain often become extinct soon after the arrival of humans. The main danger to the Cozumel raccoon is development of Cozumel Island due to the tourism industry. Because the raccoons are only located in a small coastal area at the northwest corner of the island an area covered for development the effects of habitat loss are especially severe. There are no laws protecting the raccoons and also no land set aside for them. Newer threats to their survival that have been researched in recent years are diseases and parasites. Cozumel has a population of feral cats and domestic cats and dogs that can transmit diseases to the raccoons. This salamander is found in Lake Pátzcuaro, a high-altitude lake in the Mexican state of Michoacán. They retain their larval characters throughout their entire life. This results in adults that have long, heavily filamented external gills, gill slits lined with tooth-like gill rakers, and caudal fins. Pátzcuaro salamanders are usually yellowish in color, with a lighter shade on their underbellies. They have large heads and reduced limbs. They feed by suction, and eat many types of invertebrates. Recently, this salamander has been used in research as a counterpoint to the more common captive-bred axolotl. Patsquaro salamanders have been hybridized with axolotls, and used in mitochondrial studies for comparison. Due to habitat destruction, pollution and the introduction of predatory fish the population has decreased severely in the past decades. The short-crested coquette natural habitats are subtropical or tropical moist montane forest and plantations. It is threatened by habitat loss caused by land clearing for agricultural purposes. Conservation plans are complicated by illegal narcotic production activities within its restricted range. The bird is omnivorous, eating fruit, nuts, small amphibians and some invertebrates such as worms. Oaxacan spiny-tailed iguana, is a species of lizard in the family Iguanidae. It is found in the Mexican state of Oaxaca. Its natural habitat is subtropical or tropical dry forest. It is threatened by habitat loss. The Zempaltepec deer mouse is a species of rodent in the family Chrysididae. It is endemic to southeastern Mexico, at one locality on Cerro Zempaltepec above 2,500 meters in the Sierra Madre de Oaxaca in Oaxaca State. The delicate deer mouse is also a species of rodent in the family Chrysididae. It was first described by Michael Carlton, Oscar Sanchez and Guilermina Urbano Vidales after being discovered in a patch of cloud forest on the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt. The species gets its name from its small size and delicate features compared to the other species within the genus Habermes.
the Socorro Mockingbird today lives mainly in unmodified low forest above 600 meters. The birds are generally reluctant to fly and as late as the mid-20th century were still fatally unwary, if pressed they will rather hop away than fly and if they take wing, it is usually for a few meters only. It is mostly threatened by habitat loss caused by feral sheep and the locust, and predation by feral cats which became established after 1953. On one hand, it seems that the Socorro Mockingbird is a prolific species and would be able to increase in numbers quickly if habitat improves. On the other hand, its terrestrial habits make it vulnerable to cat predation and this may limit its recovery even if sheep are contained. It is not known for example in how far foraging in the lowlands, now cat-ridden, was important for robust breeding success. The Hikati closest relatives are only known from fossils with some 19 genera described from a worldwide distribution from the Jurassic and Cretaceous. The species is entirely aquatic and does not bask or leave the water, except to lay eggs. It is entirely herbivorous, it eats figs and flowers opportunistically, but the majority of its diet are the leaves of terrestrial trees. Rarely found in captivity, the species has been overhunted because of its value in the food market. Even the hatchlings and eggs are sold as food. The species' normally passive nature makes it relatively easy to catch. The Mexican agouti is a species of rodent in the family Dasiproctidae. It is native to lowland evergreen forest in southern Mexico. This critically endangered species is threatened by habitat loss. Its overall blackish color separates it from the only other agouti found in Mexico, the Central American agouti. In the wild, they are shy animals and flee from humans, while in captivity they may become trusting. They are renowned for being very fast runners, able to keep hunting dogs occupied with chasing them for hours. When feeding, agoutis sit on their hind legs and hold food between their four paws. The Mexican spider monkey is described as being critically endangered, due to an 80% population decline in the last 45 years, mostly due to a large amount of habitat loss. These monkeys are arboreal and diurnal, and mostly inhabits the upper portion of the forest. However, it comes to the ground more frequently than other spider monkey species. It lives in fission fusion societies, large groups with a typical 20 to 42 members, which split into smaller subgroups to forage during the day. In addition to walking or running on four limbs and climbing, the spider monkey uses several forms of suspensory locomotion. Brachiation, or swinging from the arms with assistance from the prehensile tail, is the most common form of suspensory locomotion. These animals have long, pointed snouts, small ears, which are often not visible, and scent glands located on the sides of their bodies. As their eyesight is generally poor, they rely on hearing and smell to locate their prey, mainly insects. Some species also use echolocation. Distinguishing between species without examining the dental pattern is often difficult. 